bet I can make a better game than this. Maybe a sentence that has crushed your teeth at one point in time, but could you really? We all know what video games are, or at least think we do. Video games are interactive media that can be made on a computer in a couple hours, right? Close, but not exactly. The entire process that makes up this interactive media that we love so much consists of quite a few roles. But the essential roles that most people are familiar with are art, music, and programming. Seems basic enough, however, figuring out a way to combine all of these roles into a package that someone would actually want to pay for, let alone play, is where things get interesting. This may sound scary, and it kind of is, but if you stick through the video, you might learn a thing or two to help out on this journey. Let's start off by assuming you already have your great game idea. The first big step you need to take is prototyping your idea. Prototyping has a few approaches, but one of the most commonly agreed upon paths to prototyping a game is to make the best minimally viable product. What does this mean? It means that you should focus on creating the basic mechanics of your game with no emphasis on polish. Polish is when you add juice to your game by adding fancy graphics, great player feedback, and intelligent use of music and sound effects. Since you are focusing on just the mechanics of your game, you will get to see if the base gameplay is actually fun. And ultimately, that is what we're testing for. You really want to prototype your amazing idea, but you have no idea where to start. How do you even make a video game? This is where a lot of game developer paths differ since there are many approaches one can take to physically build their project, which is where game engines come into play. For those wondering, game engines in their most simplistic of forms is the structure or framework of a project. This is the pot that holds all the ingredients of a game project. You have a slab of art, a healthy chunk of programming, a dash of music, and boom, you have a game. That analogy made it sound simple, but it still takes a tremendous effort to make sure all these elements go together well. Like many things out there, there are multiple options for game engines that you can choose from. Unity is an indie developer-friendly engine that offers a gauntlet of features with fairly consistent updates. Unreal feels more like the mature older brother of Unity, with its focus on visual fidelity and trying to cater to more AAA experiences. Then you have Godot and Game Maker Studio, which may not be as feature-heavy or visually capable as the previously mentioned engines, yet they still offer a very approachable system that allows beginners to dive in with little trouble. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, all these game engines can be used for free. To an extent, that is. Don't worry too much though, most of the legal jargon mentions your release game project has to reach a certain gross revenue before you owe anything to the creators of the game engine. But as a beginner game dev at this point in the process, there's not much need to consider profits. You may think this is ridiculous, but these game engines simplify the video game making process tenfold. It is possible to make your own game from scratch, but this is a very slow and tedious process. Plus, why do work that someone else has already completed and is offering to you essentially for free? Let's take a look at some of the major benefits these softwares offer. Straight out of the box, most of these game engines can already do some great things such as simple to use visual effects like particle systems, have systems that incorporate physics and collisions and most importantly, bridge the gap between all of the art, music, and logic needed to build the game. Obviously, all great conveniences have to have some negatives. In this case, the knowledge to efficiently use any game engine is considered vast. There are so many little parts to video games that fully grasping how everything is interconnected can take months if not years to get a confident user experience. Plus, as mentioned before, in all technicalities, the engine eventually starts costing money if your projects break the revenue threshold laid out in the license agreement. Not surprisingly, there is no true one-size-fits-all situation with game engines, since each one is unique and houses their own variety of features. Do not let these drawbacks get you discouraged though. Some basic research, a little willpower, and some slight head bonking will get you a prototype up and running in relatively no time. Fantastic! You found a game engine that allowed you to prototype your game, and you gained decent success letting family, friends, and strangers test your project. It's time to buckle down and start working on your game. Again, we meet a branching path. It's always possible to work on your game entirely alone, or create a team to help produce the game at a faster rate. Let's look at what developing a video game as a solo developer will look like. As a solo developer, you are now solely responsible for every portion of your project. What this means is that you are essentially starting from ground zero and building an entire game with a goal in mind. As mentioned before, a game consists of a few critical items, which are visual art, sound design, and programming. Does this mean you have to learn how to play every instrument, learn how to paint like Bob Ross, or develop programming skills that would impress Hacker Boy? 
Of course not. It's easier than ever to find alternatives for creating or obtaining assets for your project. If you prefer to work on everything yourself, there are plenty of options such as Blender for 3D modeling, GIMP for photo editing, and Cakewalk for sound design. What about being a solo dev but not wanting to do every portion of the project yourself? This is where asset packs and contract work rule supreme. Asset packs are just a collection of pre-made items such as art, music, or even code that someone puts out for others to use. You may have noticed I mentioned contract work. Contract work is an agreement where you pay someone to do a certain amount of work for you. This allows you to maintain full control of your project and get the benefit of having someone with more talent in a specific area help out. The internet is full of places to find people to contract work out to, but some of the most reputable sources are Fiverr, ArtStation, or Upwork. Now that you have a few ideas of how to manage as a solo dev, let's take a peek at what it would be like to go the studio route. So what the fly and French toast are studios. Bruh. There are a few types of studios, but the most common are AAA studios and indie studios. Bethesda, Blizzard, Epic, and Rockstar may be the first things that pop into your mind when thinking of a AAA studio. These are the companies that have massive budgets, sometimes well into the millions, and can have hundreds of employees. AAA studios typically go for the safe bet when developing a game. This means they will produce games that are proven to sell well, such as your Call of Duties and Grand Theft Autos. This puts these large studios in a unique spot, since even if they want to adventure out and try new ideas, they really can't because if the game fails, hundreds of people can easily lose their jobs. This type of studio probably doesn't fit your needs very well though if you're looking to create a small, unique experience. That is where indie dev studios come in. Indie studios tend to have much smaller budgets and a smaller pool of employees and are not backed by a large publisher. The indie route grants the broadest of freedoms to developers. The reason for this is because indie devs are focusing on their own passion projects and are not tied down with having to ensure hundreds of people are going to get paid every week. You may be wondering, why haven't I heard of indie dev titles before? Cuphead, Celeste, Stardew Valley, and yes, even Minecraft are all considered indie games. And that's just to name a few. Understanding what game development studios are is cool and all, but what is the importance of it? It shows that it is a good idea to start a company for the project you are working on. This way, the financials, branding, and publishing can be handled in a more legitimate manner. It technically is not required for some projects, but in general, you'll be required to have some sort of business license. This is not legal advice. So it'd be best to talk to a lawyer to help sort out what your needs are. Great! You started your own studio, and you are making rapid progress on your overall project. Finishing the game should be your next priority, eh, right? Well, maybe not just yet. You may think finishing your game as fast as possible would take precedence, but making your game is only half the battle. You need to make sure that people know your game exists. Just publishing your game and hoping people will play will likely result in you being very sad. Marketing tends to get a bad rep nowadays, since most of social media is biased around self-promotion and money-grabbing schemes. But the reality is, even if you make the greatest game in the world, no one will play it if they don't know it exists. So what are some of the ways your game can get noticed? You can attempt to just put your game on the storefront, such as Steam or Itch.io, but that doesn't guarantee that the game will be seen or played. The next logical step is to put out some form of advertisement on social media. For example, a tweet to your following saying, Hey guys, check out my most epic video game creation. This may net you a couple of purchases or plays, which of course one of these was your mom because she wants to support you. Thanks again, mom. Perfect! You created a studio so you can publish your game, you advertised effectively during the game development process, and garnered a decent following thanks to the friends you made along the way and the super cool niche community. Finally, it is time to release your game. Right? Almost. But don't forget about doing quality testing. Quality testing, or QA for short, really allows a small selected group of people, either paid or volunteered, to play your game and report their experiences. This allows you to get a decent amount of bugs or issues out of your project before releasing the game to the public. Now, now is the time to release your game. Your game's Steam page has been perfectly crafted to show newcomers what your game is about. Using eye-catching GIFs and a solid trailer that explores the interesting parts of your gameplay. The little following you have gained netted you a healthy amount of wishlist, and your community is just begging you for you to finally release the game to the wild. And that's just what you do.
you press the publish button and and the rest of the story is up to you to make happen. Thank you Seth for having me on this video and leading the project. I hope this video clears up some of the unfamiliarities that our beginners might have. Just remember that the perfect time to start is now and I hope you have fun on your game dev journey. I want to thank you for watching and I also want to give a massive shout out to wannabe Manisha for lending her voice for this video. Make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to our channels for more excellent videos and as always, take care and stay safe.